When it comes to B-roll, it's one of the easiest ways to ruin a video if you do it like most people. So taking a clip from Pexels, slapping another timeline and calling it a day. But don't worry, don't worry. In this video, I'll show you how to make actually good looking B-roll and I'll even show you how you can add text and other stuff in the 3D space. Now enough talking, let's get started. All right, now we're inside After Effects and I have this quick B-roll clip of my, my workspace here. I'll leave this in the description if you want to practice on this. But you can use any footage you want. And first off, I want to say, before we get into making this look good, try to avoid pixels and all that stuff. If you can, record all your B-roll yourself. It's going to be so much better. And the clips from pixels have been used like 5,000 times. This is not good. So try to record your B-roll yourself. Or use some sites like BecTZ. It's a pretty good one. Or Mixkit, I think. You can try those ones. But don't use the regular pixels. But yeah, so I have this, this quick clip right here of my setup and we're gonna try to make this look awesome so the first thing i see when we play this back is it's looking a bit shaky because you know i'm a editor not a videographer so i don't know how to record how do we fix this we go to the effects and presets and we add a warp stabilizer so this one and this is going to analyze really quickly shouldn't take too long and it's going to make it smooth hopefully all right so now it's finished analyzing and if you play it back it's looking so good already so much better awesome now the next thing i want to do is add some text in the 3d space and it's not so simple as just typing here it's, it doesn't look like it's in the image i want it to look like it's in the image that's the key so what i'll do is i'll actually pre-compose this makes it easier pre-comp it and i'll go over here on the right to the tracker if you can't see the tracker you can go to window and select tracker here and go to the tracker and select track camera so this one, and it's going to again analyze it, it's going to take a few seconds, shouldn't take too long, and I will show you what it does in a sec. Alright, now it's finished tracking and you can see it looks kind of weird now, with all these things. And the first thing you want to do when you use the track camera is go to advanced, and you want to check the average error. For me it's 0 0.77, which is really good actually. If this number is under 1, 1 pixels, it's pretty good. If it's anywhere like 2 pixels or anything above 1, it's probably not gonna look that good. So look for anything under 1 pixel. And now, yeah, once we select the tracker here, you can see all these little cursors and the mouse has this red thingy. And now what I'll do is I'll just hold left click on the mouse and I'll select a few of these. So just like this, kind of like this. Now we have these crosshairs and now what we can do is we can right click and create a solid and a camera. And now it creates a new solid and a new camera on the timeline. And now the reason we did this is so we can add text that is 3D inside the image. So let's make a new text. So command T and the type tool. And I'll just type in my workspace and I'll make the font a bit smaller and I'll make this 3D. So now it's in the 3D space. You can drag it over here. And now the easiest way to make it look like it's in the image is parent this to the solid. So this pick whip, pick whip icon here, parent, just grab it and drag it to the solid. And now, once we open the properties of this text, you go over to transform and you can reset this. And you see, now it is with the solid in the image. And now you can use these, you, you can use all these sliders to move it around. So I'll make it stand up with the X slider and I'll drag it up and I'll rotate it to make it look kind of similar to match with the MacBook and this thing is. So yeah, like this. And then I'll drag it over here, rotate it like this, and that's pretty good for me. Then I'll increase the font size and yeah, perfect. Now you see what I mean. Text is in the image. If you play this back, it's standing right there and look, looks pretty awesome. Great. Now what I'll also do is I'll add a line connecting the text and the computer. So you can press G and you can click here and click under the text there and stroke can be like maybe like 8, that'll be pretty good and make this into a 3D layer as well. And now the easiest way to make this match with the text is to open the two views panel, so right here. And if we zoom out, we can see the text is super far away and the line is here, so we have to push it to the text. So let me grab it with the Z and drag it a bit more and just grab this X thingy and you can see the solid is here so the computer is computer's keyboard is basically right here and the text is over here so put it on the edge of the computer and we can 
rotate it kind of like this to make it match the text and just like this it should be pretty good now it's really small here well first off you can center the anchor point so i have this plugin or you can just yeah holding command and double click and this also centers it and then we can just scale it up yeah this is looking pretty awesome we can press g to make the line a bit more like this now we can take off the two views go back to one view and you can fit it fit up to 100 and yeah this is looking awesome now they're both in the 3d space now i'll make these actually look good so i'll go over to the line and i'll just go to context shape stroke and i'll make this a round cap that's what i always do quick tip right there and then i'll quickly add some effects this video isn't about effects so i'll just i'll just put on a preset you can copy the settings if you want all right so here here we have the effects I added on the text, so a drop shadow, turbulent displays, weird chromatic aberrations, I got two glows, two different glows, these ones, and yeah, that's it, you can kind of copy these settings if you want, here, here they are, and yeah, what I'll do is I'll just copy these effects, paste it on the line, and yeah, and now look what we managed to come up with. This is looking really good. Now for the line, a lot of trim paths, so keyframe the end, push it a bit forward, make a zero right there you can easy ease this and go to the graph editor and just make a nice little graph like this now it looks really good then when the trim pass is finished i'll make this uh text appear so i'll just slap on uh maybe a fade up characters that's probably pretty good and then i'll see the keyframes and make it way shorter and easy ease them just a bit yeah that looks awesome and now you guys can see this purple thing we don't want that so go ahead and so go ahead and click this eye thingy to make it disappear now to add some effects to the b-roll to make it look even better i'm gonna make a new adjustment layer here and the reason i make a new adjustment layer is to add some effects to it and i want to drag this under the text under pretty much everything except the actual footage so the text and the line doesn't get affected by the effects we add all right so the first effect we'll add is a uh, noise so i think it's this one yeah yeah this one so make it 7% and click off the use color noise and this adds a nice grain to the image now the next one we'll add is a grid and this will get those nice lines everyone uses so here we have a grid effect and what i'll do is i'll make this size from make it width and height sliders i'll make the width like 4000 pretty massive and i'll make the height like maybe four get okay, looking something like this then you have to change this anchor point away so there's not a line going in the middle of the screen. Just push it to the right. And that will make the border like two, make it thin. And now this grid is looking pretty white. So let's change the color to black. And we'll change the blending mode to a screen overlay. Perfect. Now you can even decrease the opacity if it's a bit too much. And yeah, whatever you like. Next I'll add a optics compensation. So this one. And here we can kind of make the camera look a bit, a bit more unique. So I'll make this field of view like 16 and I'll click this reverse lens distortion and yeah that's pretty much it. You can see without it it's super flat but with it it gives that little roundness look you know. Pretty nice. And I think we'll finish these effects off with a vignette. So this one. I'll up the vignette a bit. Make it look nice. Something like this. And yeah this is looking pretty good. And there's one more thing we can do to this. We can add a lumetric color to the precomp here. And we can kind of play around with the colors. This color correcting is a pretty... Pretty nice way to make b-roll look better i'll go over to the basic correction and the way i do color correction for b-roll is i play around with these things until it looks good there's really not not much to it i'll just kind of move these around try different things whatever will work i'll go with that not rocket science guys simple stuff now i'll go to the curves and i'll make a curve kind of like this push this down push this up push this up this is what i usually do and you can also go to the hue versus sat. You can play around with this color. So for example, I have some green on this mouse pad. So what I can do is I can make a dot here, dot here. And I can kind of push the green up in the middle to make it pop even more. And same for the purple on the image. You can do something like this and make the purple pop even more. And that's looking pretty good. Then also in the color wheels, you can decrease the shadows a bit. Make it look so much better. Maybe make the shadows a bit more to the blue side. I think I like that. Awesome. And now these effects in the adjustment layer, you can just select the first one and select the last one by holding shift. And just go over to animation and save an animation preset. And you can just save this as a b-roll preset, slap it on every b-roll you use, and it'll 
make your edit so much better, make your clients so much more happier. So definitely do that. It's gonna save you so much time. You don't have to add these individually every time. But yeah, I'll show you one more thing, which is how I would make this appear on the screen. It would be pretty simple. So making a position keyframe here and just pushing it up, kind of like this, pushing it up like this and just easy easing this and making a left graph. So pull this to 80 and pull this to 20. That's the basic left graph and putting motion blur on. I really like this. Not a lot of people use this. They try some crazy transitions, but this is just a really clean way to put on the B-roll. Oh yeah, this looks absolutely incredible. Here's the before and after. Made it look so much better. Now, thank you guys for watching. Check out this video for more. I mean, go ahead and subscribe to the channel to see more awesome After Effects editing tutorials. And yeah, hope you enjoyed and take care.